Today, we're gonna be going through four chat GPT hacks that will make your experience so much better on the platform. So make sure you stay tuned till the end where I'm gonna go through live examples on how to utilize these four hacks. And with that being said, welcome back to TQM or the quintessential millennial channel where we talk about all things finance with an emphasis on AI. If you are new around here, consider smashing the like button down below and subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and get started. And I wanna give a shout out to the person you see on the screen here and that is Harsh Makadia. He is someone that talks about artificial intelligence on a day-to-day -day basis over on Twitter. And he's the one who really gave me the idea for today's video, but I thought YouTube also needs to see the same kind of love that Twitter has been receiving from his content. So he says here, four ChatGPT prompt tricks that 90% of you don't know about. And honestly, for me, I was surprised because four out of four of the ones he mentioned, I had no clue even existed. So let's go ahead and dive in. And I'm gonna be using chat or GPT-4 for the purposes of today's video, because again, I am paying for the premium version, but you'll get the exact same responses, give or take maybe a few words and concepts if you use the regular legacy version of chat GPT. Now, number one, using comments. So if you use hashtags in your prompts, they are not going to be recognized by the GPT software. So with that being said, I can ask the question, hey, chat GPT, how are you today? And then I put a hashtag in there saying, Ahmed, remember, chat GPT won't count this as a part of the prompt, so treat it like a notes section. What does chat GPT respond with? Hello, as an AI, I don't have emotions or personal experience, but I'm here to help you with any questions or information you may need. How can I help you today? So this can optimize your experience because say you're using ChatGPT as an assistance to maybe some of the research you're doing at home or maybe some assignments or homework you are doing. Adding hashtags along the way of your prompts to keep notes in there so then you can go back and reference to see what was I thinking when I was writing out this prompt. So again, it doesn't recognize the hashtag or any of the words following a hashtag until that sentence is completed. So that was number one and now let's go to hack number two. And that is using a markdown format. I actually really, really like this. And this could be helpful for people who are getting ready to present certain things for a classroom presentation. Maybe it's a business meeting that you have. It doesn't matter what it would look like. But again, this is one thing that you can start utilizing to make the format look a lot more neat and pretty much finalized before you even leave the platform. So I said here, write a blog on YouTube prompts Give me output in markdown format. Use heading, bold, and underline wherever needed. So you can see throughout this specific prompt, the response was an all bold in a very title looking format, top YouTube prompts to inspire your next viral video. So you can put this even in a newsletter or it could be in something that, you know, just informational type of things. It looks very, very neat. So it says here, creating content on YouTube can be both challenging and rewarding, giving you a little bit of an introduction, followed by a nice, bold title, The Ultimate Challenge. And you could see, now when I tell it to use some type of dynamic format in terms of the actual text type and style, you see there's italics now, there's quotations, there's bold, but beforehand, in any type of previous ChatGPT experience that I have personally shown on the channel or even used myself, I've never seen it have this type of versatility where it's able to use both regular fonts, bold fonts, caps, all caps, lowercase. You can see it looks a lot more neat, even bullet points. It just looks very much fancy. So if you're someone who has to prepare presentations or you're somebody that prefers to see things laid out instead of just a chunk of text that pops out on GPT, now you can see, start using things like Markdown to hopefully start to be able to differentiate different sections and move forward from there. So I actually really liked the second hack and I know it's gonna be one that I'll only, that I will be not only using for the videos, but also just in, for my channel in general and even my personal use for GPT. Now let's move over to number three. This one was quite interesting because I think again, when it comes to using GPT, sometimes we don't really utilize it to its full capacity and the use of dynamic variables is very much valid on this platform so you can convert text into variables and you don't have to replace those variables or you can just replace the variables but not the text every single time and i think that way it could save some time so what i did for this example was i want to know the capital of a country and i just put in uh, parentheses there country i want to know the capital of country 
And you can see there's parentheses there. Also, can you please share the population of the country and the currency conversion with respect to country? And then you can basically put a drop down. So you have the country of whatever you're trying to research. So for this example, I use my home country, which is Sudan. And then you, I want to compare it to the United States dollar in terms of its conversion rate to this currency. So say someone, say you're somebody who's a travel planner. You have to go around and help other individuals plan their vacations or different things like that. And you don't want to have to go in and type every single time these different countries and the different conversion rates. But now you can just input the country of interest and the country that you want to convert your currency into instead of rewriting everything. It's going to save you some time. So you can see here what the capital of Sudan is Khartoum. As of my knowledge, as of the cutoff date of September 21, a little bit outdated. That's just how AI works. The estimated population is about 44 million. However, I suggest checking the most recent data for more accurate information. And it talks about the SDG. But one thing I forgot in my initial prompt was what currency did I want of interest? And it said here, can you please specify the target currency? And then I wrote currency is USD. And now it mentions that back in 21, one dollar was approximately 447.53 Sudanese pounds or SDGs. I actually really like this. And again, you can use this as potentially even a business model if you really liked, because if you think about it, the amount of output of data and information you can get at a pretty quick pace. Now, mind you, I understand maybe with the currency example here specifically, it's maybe not the best, but you can do this as just using the same example. And that is travel planner or travel planning for other people using that same context. You can start identifying things about that country. What vaccinations are needed for said country? What requirements are needed for my visa or passport? Those kind of things, you might end up creating a website or a one-stop shop for people to just input their information. And based off of these variables or the prompts you've already created, it's going to output them all the information they need using artificial intelligence. Pretty dang cool if you ask me. And now we'll move over to the fourth and final hack. There's of course many, many more, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna to stick to four, and that is using a dropdown or having multiple options to get answers for. So you can ask basically a multi-step question. How do I approach YouTube channel with the following? A, AI focused, like this channel. And then B, AI and finance focused. And then C, solely just finance focused. So it says here to, to approach creating a YouTube channel in each of these niches, you'll need to follow some general steps and tailor your content to specific focus. Here's a guide on how you would get started. And it goes by number one, and then it shows for each individual question that I asked for the three steps, A, B, and C, what you need to do for each of those specifically. So again, I just used this example for just the purpose of the video, but I saw over on Twitter, you know, the example that was used was way different. It was talking about maybe looking at it from the perspective of a business, right? If you're a software business and you're looking to um, implement certain software at different types of companies, one that's 50 plus employees, 100 plus employees, or 10 or less, because you have all those different options, now you got something else to play with and this becomes a lot more powerful. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. I do appreciate your support as always and hopefully you guys found the information helpful. If you did, comment down below and let me know which of the four hacks maybe you have never heard of, if not all four. That's all I had for you. And until next time, everybody, as always, take care.